So, so how's, how's the day been for you so far? What, what, are, what are your impressions? Um, I think great impressions. Uh, you know, I think uh, John Smith had some really great points. Uh, Luke did as well. I, you know, I think everyone brought something to the table. You, you always do a great job of curating a good event. The panels, uh, I, you know, all the panelists, I felt like I wanted to hear a little bit more from, from them. So I hope they all choose to come back and, and share more as well. That's great. No, no, that's good. Um, yeah, some, some, sometimes we want to do longer panels um, and then, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a careful balance. So we'll, yes, yes. <laughs> we'll make it work. So, you know, especially in this particular time, uh, there is still uh, a recruitment shortage. Um, it, you know, we, we hear big, big uh, things in mainstream uh, press to talk about, um, oh dear, there are no jobs and people are losing their jobs but yet you're still finding a great appetite to recruit. Uh, what, what's happening? I, you know, I think uh, you know, business overall had a much different perception of security five, 10 years ago. Um, you know, even you know, the, the great talk where it's comparing, a lot of people are still operating like it's 2010. Um, I, I think our staffing is still very much like it's 2010. Uh, we've made efforts, you know, in every country, I think they've made efforts to build the workforce and, and to create that. But, you know, at the beginning of building momentum, it's always the greatest challenge, right? You're, you're essentially building something from nothing. And, you know, there's a, a joke going around in IT about, oh, I need a, a so-and-so developer that's been doing this for five years. And well, the tech was only developed about two years ago. So even the person who wrote it couldn't be qualified. Uh, so, you know, in a lot of organizations, security just wasn't a common role, right? And now every company needs security. And, you know, there's a, a good point uh, earlier about uh, outsource it. If you, if you can't get, build it in-house, you know, call in the experts. That's, that's what they're here for. Um, but I, I think that, uh, you know, one of the things that I like about this industry is that there is such a, a generous information sharing and, um, and encouragement for, uh, for sharing that information and mentoring each other. But I think that's realistically the, uh, the answer to this problem as well. Yeah, no, I, I like it. And, and obviously, you know, I'm, I'm grateful because we end up having people fantastically, you know, speaking on these, on these <laughs> tasks, I think. Um, but, but, but why don't we look at the, the topic of today, you know, AI and automation. Um, obviously, on the one hand, it's good fun to try and debunk uh, marketing jargon. And there's always the, the jargon of the day. And, 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 and we, 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 we like to talk about that. But in, on a serious note, you know, there's an impression that AI and automation may uh, fill the skills gap by automating people. Um, <laughs> but, but, but that never seems to materialize, whether it's the industrial revolution or, you know, anything in the 20th century, you know, it, it creates disruption, but, but it creates longer term job opportunities for, you know, for roles. What, what type of roles do you see that we haven't even thought of yet uh, arising. Uh, you know, I, I think that um, it, there is a, a, a more focus of engineering roles that are uh, math based and, uh, you know, focused on the algorithms and computational models. Um, I think there is a, a push for developers and engineers who have uh, higher education and, and higher learning as well. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely still a need for all levels, but, um, you know, I think it also speaks to uh, something that John said earlier. Um, I think it, the term that he used was uh, machine deviation allowances, right? So you've, you've got companies that are building these AI and automation solutions and, and it, it makes sense like, oh, hey, you know, uh, John makes this, John does this same thing over and over again, we should automate that. But, uh, you know, are we really extrapolating everything that he's doing in that task? 
right? Are, do we really have all of those factors um, put in with uh, when we create that automation, right? Um, so when you're thinking about architecting these solutions or architecting the automation of these roles, do you really have a, have you identified everything that that role does? Um, you know, can, can you turn a, a five-year security engineer into a, a scripted task? No, it's, it's not a holistic solution. Um, so I think that's some of the changes that I'm seeing, um, you know, in, in needing, um, you know, more of a, an advanced and holistic mindset in your engineering skills and engineering team, um, but then also you're recognizing who's building it and how they're going about it. I like it. And if, I, if I go back, you mentioned education. And yes, I, I, there was a number of things you mentioned, and I'm just pouncing on the one. Oh, okay, yeah, I was trying to pick a bunch. <laughs> but, 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 but isn't it difficult for you to work out exactly how much someone knows from education, given that regardless of how many master's degrees people are going on these days, you know, a lot of it is self-taught or a lot yes. of it is certified by a specific industry body. And, and yet people are going to university and getting degrees in something rather specific. If I use a totally different example, insurance, uh, no way would a degree in insurance get you a job in insurance. No way, right? Only a specific qualification in insurance with a license and everything, that would get you a, a, a job in insurance. But yet we see a plethora of cybersecurity master's programs out there. Mm, is that any help? Uh, or, or, I don't know, how can you tell the difference? So I think there's two questions there. Um, one, you know, how, how can I tell, tell the difference? I, I try not to be the end all be all, but I do try to, you know, separate the chaff as they, they say. Um, you know, I, I think a security professional's ability to first simplify the, the concepts, right? But beyond the jargon, Right. Can they uh, address the business with me, uh, with my recruiter hat as someone in the business? Right. Can they also then deep dive into technical as to what was their specific, uh, you know, how are they specifically performing their task? And I will continue to dig um, and, and see where they will go in, in their technical scope uh, before I have to tap out and, you know, they, OK, they, I, they're talking above my head um, and, and that's, uh, you know, I, I always appreciate the ability to do both, right? Um, and then ultimately, it's it's my clients that do the full technical screening specific to their their organization as well. Um, but then the other side of that is, you know, can a, a master's degree prepare you for the real world and um, or you know, real world cyber? And uh, you know, I think there's a couple of things there. One, um, I think a career pivoter, someone who's coming from insurance or from a, a, you know having been in the corporate world and then slaps a degree on that, I think they actually might be more prepared than a college student who is uh, leaving college, even if, even with a master's. You know, they. There's a lot of complexities and inherent uh, uh, challenges and opportunities with the corporate world that they, you know, you're just not prepared for with your first job. That's a lot of what internships are, are seeking to solve, right? And there's a lot of different ways that people are, are solving for that challenge, but um, I think it pulls into, you know, what I was considering as the solution. Um, you know, we, we have uh, this gap that we talk about, um, but that means we have a, a fair amount of senior talent. We just don't have uh, enough of them for the roles that we have. So how do we uh, you know, transfer that knowledge? And for me, it's a call to action to senior professionals that you know, commit a minimum of three to four hours a month to mentoring other professionals. And the more professionals you can reach with that, um, the better, right? So if, if you can do a presentation at a, a local chapter meeting or um, you know, at a university or um, at, you know, an event like this, but you know, preferably reaching junior people. Um, you know, if you can commit to a certain amount of time every month and maybe break that out over a week, but you know, get your knowledge in front of the people that are trying to get into the career. And then also, um, you know, how do you uh, ensure that you can bring them onto your team? I, I heard a really good point from a CISO who he said, you know, a, 
a security team or a company's ability to hire junior talent is actually dependent on how mature their security organization is. So if they have, uh, you know, if they, they have a solid solution in place and they are running efficiently and effectively, they're in a better capacity to bring on and, and train junior talent. And so I think this, this talent gap actually affects um, the, the, the ones that are, uh, you know, catching up, you know, the companies and teams that are catching up, I think it actually affects them more than it affects uh, the, the developed and established teams. So how do we, how do we solve for that? And I think it's, it's actively making choices to, uh, to hire and mentor junior talent. And, you know, I think some of these smaller companies and smaller teams I think outsourcing is a good solution, but also commit to hiring someone junior. And say you hire that person at 60 or 80,000 a year, um, you invest 10 to 20K in their education, uh, you know, SAN certifications, other, other opportunities, um, you're still paying less than you would for a very senior talent. And you've got someone who's very hungry and has their entire future career on the line of making sure that they do a good job for you. So, you know, I think there's ways that we can, um, you know, get out of our comfort zone and seek out those outliers, seek out diversity of thought and, uh, and solve for these problems. Yeah, and I think that's a bit of a win-win. You know, you might, you know, I, at the beginning of my career, uh, it saw that, uh, especially in the 2007-8 crash, uh, there were lots of job seekers and not a lot of job givers. Um, but uh, and, and and at that time, I thought, oh, how exploitative um, that they that they should you know uh, rely on all these you know new people. Uh, but it was a win-win ultimately. Um, you got experience, and they got cheap labour um, or cheaper labour, um, which 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 is always interesting and and maybe that's something that automation will 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 will, will sort of look to um we've got a nice comment in the audience keith uh warfog he says uh, complementary skills and skills enhancements forthcoming to make security automation more effective that's the beauty of ai in security automation use cases hence always a need for more skills um no i like yes. that um, yes well, let's get some let, let's get value out of you uh, on this panel. Um, <laughs> help people to pass interviews and 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 and, and uh, you know get get the job they want. What are your top tips and techniques? Uh, you know to prepare people uh, when when they're going when they're going for a, a job application. Uh, well, I think, you know, in my talk, Hacking Hired, I identify the four vectors of your job search, right? And, uh, you know, I, I think there's a couple of elements in that, right? So there's the application process that really relies on the tech tools, uh, platforms like LinkedIn and your resume and, and what it means to have multiple versions of your resume and, and how to be most effective when you're applying directly to jobs or cold applying. Um, but then the interview is, is a whole nother challenge as well and, uh, and how that's really a two-way two -way street. And I, I would say my top tips, you know, off the cuff, um, it, it, you know, most security people don't need to apply online, um, but it, there is really uh, an advantage to doing that, that, that is a, a plus that you can do as long as you're really looking at what uh, the job description is asking for and, and translating that for the recruiter. Most recruiters are not security, they're not IT, um, and they're really going by the very top few requirements on the job posting. So what you want to do is you want to put those top few requirements in your summary at the top. Objectives are out. It's not about you. It's about the employer. Um, and so your summary is, uh, you know, it's the top of the newspaper. It's the top of the fold, like we used to say. Um, and you want to make sure that in that summary, you're addressing their core requirements because that gets the average recruiter to keep reading. Um, you know, that, that's what they're looking for. We're professional skimmers. You know, we might not read code, uh, but we do a lot of reading and, and a lot of looking for those, those bold points. And, you know, there's AI and automation in employment as well um, on, on the 
recruiting side and you know what they're doing when you know what that that code is doing is specifically comparing your resume to the job description and so that's why you may end up having multiple versions of your resume i i tell people to have a master resume and then pull out from that and construct a resume specific to the job you're applying of course, you know, leveraging the people vector, uh, finding someone you know who knows someone who works there, or, uh, you know, especially when we talk about how small the pool of talent is for experienced people, you know, you probably know someone who's worked there already or, you know, can make a connection there as well. Um, but, it, you know, I, th I think those are some of my, my top tips off the cuff. Very good, very good. Now, I just put you on the spot there. I just thought too, too, too good an opportunity to miss, you know. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, I am the self-professed champion of the audience. So, so I'm, <laughs> what, what would the audience want to know? Um, yes. No, I like it. Um, so, so, so what's next for you? Um, I, I, I know uh, you're, you're organizing uh, events of your own um, and, uh, and hopefully with me uh, it, it come, it coming up uh, in, in the year. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited. Thank you for asking. Um, the, the big one that I think I get the most excited about is DevSecOps Days and, uh, and last year we did Phoenix, and um, it is a global uh, series of events. So DevSecOps Days is built by the All Day DevOps team, and it's uh, you know they've got a UK event coming up, they uh, you know Singapore and Australia, but across the country as well. And um, we, we're going to grow from the Phoenix event to the yay! <laughs> nice to see some appreciation for that. Um, it is a, a, a mouthful to say, but DSO Days. Southwest. So we are going to be um, supporting the, the Southwest of the US is the, the beauty of going virtual. Um, and we are uh, um, just opened the call for participants. So we're looking for people who want to do speaking or um, a, a deep dive tech talk or have an idea for a workshop. The thing that I like about DSO days is that um, it's there's no vendor talks there's no sales pitches. It's all, you know, uh, people talking about these tools, you know, we got pretty candid this morning about certain tools that are in the AI landscape. Um, you know, this is a, an opportunity to uh, be vendor agnostic and talk about those tools. Cybersecurity Council of Arizona is also working on a couple of events. Uh, we've got some, some things we're going to be announcing soon. And then I'm helping support the ASU Partner to Protect events that uh, is probably going to be in first quarter of next year. And, uh, you know, we've got a few ideas, Philem and I as well. Very nice, very nice. Well, can I can I put your um, email in the chat box in case? Sure. Uh, yeah. You never know; there might be takers for the call for papers. I, I sense there might be. I'm I'm just smelling. <laughs> you know. Um, yes, I have. Um, there's definitely a couple of people I want to be sure to reach out to about that from uh, from today's agenda. But um, we we've got a, a small speaker. Uh, Oh, yes. <laughs> We've got a small speaker uh, committee. Um, you know, ideally, we'd love to have more presentations than we have time, but it is a, a full day event Friday, December uh, 11th. Um, and ideally, if we could have two tracks with uh, two different themes, that would be great too. you know, give people lots of options. Um, but, you know, we want to we want to see what people want to talk about and what kind of questions that they have. Um, one of the ideas too we talked about is having a, a breakout session where uh, we identify a, a few components of um, the different tools of DevSecOps, right? So um, code management, that, that type of thing. And if people have, you know, they're considering in their initiatives in the next year or two, uh, you know, they can head off into this private breakout room and share their thoughts and experience on tools in, in that solution channel, right? Um, and so they're able to have some candid conversations around those uh, topics. Nice. No, no, no. That's good. And, and, and I love uh, Noel's uh, reference to three sides, uh, perhaps uh, getting their speakers from the DevSecOps and then, you know, <laughs> It's all, it's all a daily chain. Yes, and OWASP as well. Uh, we've got some people from OWASP that are, you know, wanting to contribute. And yeah, so I'm pretty excited about it. Great. Um, well, you know, this is, this is fascinating. I'll put, put your email in the chat box. Um, and uh, we, we, we've got to move on now to our, to our final uh, Event Horizon panel. Um, but, but yeah, no, it's nice. And it's nice to have an opportunity to do this in a public setting. Um, 
Uh, Keith uh, says, uh, count him in for DevSecOps days. There you go, you've got one taker, that's good. Um, <laughs> it's nice because we, we don't get to do this enough in a public setting. Uh, you, you, you and I might talk, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, but, but this, is, this is good. Yes, and yes. This, this develops the community, so. Indeed, and that's, that's what it's about. When we talk about solving the skills gap, it's developing the community and, and committing time to, uh, to building these connections and network. Yeah, it's, it's where it's at. Well, Rachel, uh, thank you very much. Please give Rachel a lovely virtual round of applause um, and we will see you very soon. Thank you, sir.